Here's how to add color to your doodly assets. In this video, we're going to learn how to create a doodly animation like the one you're seeing right now. We're first drawing lines and then add color. I'll also cover some advanced techniques for drawing paths. But if you haven't seen the official doodly tutorial on drawing paths, you'll need to see that first. There's the address. I'll also show you how to find it. Go to doodly.com, then click on Tutorials, and then scroll down to the bottom. The tutorial on drawing paths is the seventh one, right here. From here on, I'll assume you're comfortable with the lessons in that tutorial. Now, we're going to need some files to work with which I have placed in the files for the Doodly Design Group on Facebook. Here's how to find them. Go to Facebook and make sure you're in the Doodly Design Group. Move down to the Files button, click on that. The files we want all start with Flower Girl. There are five of them. Here's how to download them. For each of these files, there's a menu button over on the right. Click on that, click download, and you want to re repeat this for all five of the files. So what exactly are these files? What do doodly characters and props look like? How do they work? I'll demonstrate using Photoshop. This works the same with any image editing program which can handle layers and transparency. This is a structure of a typical Doodly asset, although this one is not available from Doodly. There's a line drawing with the line color being black, and it's usually a closed outline, although that's not required. Inside the line drawing is a white background. Everything outside of the line drawing is transparent. Most image editing programs display transparency as a gray and white checkered pattern. The files you just downloaded were created using the layers in this Photoshop file. All of them have a transparent background behind them. Flower Girl Erased is just the white layer. Flower Girl Line is the black lines layer. Flower Girl Color is the colors layer with the black lines layer on top of it. Flower Girl Blush is just the blush layer, which only consists of these two little pink blobs. Flower Girl Complete is the colors, blush, and black lines layers together. How does transparency work with Doodly? When you stack a Doodly asset on top of another one, the first thing that happens is Doodly erases any part of the underneath asset it is covered by anything non-transparent in the on-top asset. Transparent parts are ignored. They don't cause anything to be erased. Now just to demonstrate that what you're seeing here is a gray and white checkerboard pattern really is transparent, I'll change the color in the background layer. First, I'll make the background layer visible. It's white now, but I can change it to any color using the paint bucket tool. Notice as I change the background colors, that everything that's transparent allows the background color to show through. Okay, that's enough of Photoshop for now. Let's head over to Doodly. Let's look at the two methods of coloring in Doodly, multi-file and one file. Multi-file pros, faster and easier to trace the paths, allows one color on top of another. Cons, need to align the images in a stack, harder to reuse. You can't use the eraser feature. One file pros, just one file to use again and again. The eraser feature works as usual. It's great for logos. Cons, tracing the paths can be slow and hard. No layering of colors is possible. Method one. Now it's time to explore the two methods. 
Method one is using multiple images. I'll import all the Flower Girl images except for Flower Girl Complete. That one is used in the second method. Flower Girl Erased is hard to see without a background, so I'll add one. Click on Custom, click Custom Color, change that to Custom Image, import a file, and there's the background image there. Looks good. Apply it. Great. Now we'll go over to Characters. Click the plus sign to add our first new character, Flower Girl Erased. Type in the name. Okay. And there's a nice outline of our image. Now do flower girl lines. This one just has the black lines on a transparent background. I'll align those images later on. Now we click on flower girl color. And finally, Flower Girl Flush. Okay, now we need to align these so they're stacked perfectly on top of each other. You can usually get better accuracy by adjusting these with the arrow keys instead of with the mouse. That's what I'm doing here. Okay, that's the first three images. Blush is way off, so let's move that a bit. And again, using the arrow keys, we can do some more fine tuning on that. Okay, that looks pretty good. Now it's time to start drawing some paths. I'm going to speed up the video during the drawing of the paths just to save time. I'll start by drawing paths just on the black lines here. The main thing when you're doing these lines is you want to reveal just the path that you're working on and try not to reveal anything ahead of time. And if you do an extra line like I just did there, this thing has, as far as I can tell, unlimited undo using Control-Z. You notice several times as I'm drawing the paths here, if I'm putting a new control point very close to where one already exists in another line, the method I prefer for that is to place a new control point far away from where I want it to be and then move it like I did just there. It's a lot easier doing it that way than it is to try to avoid the control points that's already on, on the screen. So my technique is sort of place a control point somewhere very close to where you want it and then adjust it. And I like how in the, with the current version of Doogly, you can always adjust a point simply by moving your mouse pointer over the point. When the cursor changes, you can then move the point. Makes it very handy. In the official video, I think they said you had to control click them, but that's no longer true. And the nice thing about the multiple image method is when you're tracing the black lines there's no colored parts that you have to dodge or avoid or worry about so it's very simple trace the black lines and don't don't reveal any lines too soon
which is really the main advantage of doing this method. Got a little fussy in her shoulder here trying to avoid that arm. Another important tip, when you want these lines to be drawn smoothly in the reveal, it's important to space the control points fairly evenly along the line that you're tracing. Now, sometimes you might want to have it drawn more rapidly, you know, which will produce more jerky drawing motion. But if you want it to be nice and smooth, just evenly space your control points and that will take care of that. The line is a little too low right there at the bottom of that pant cuff. We'll be fixing that here in a few minutes. And that's when I noticed I had that line too far down. Well, you can adjust these points at any time during the drawing process, which is nice. Okay, path for the left arm there. Another thing I do when I'm tracing paths is adjust the width constantly. You can always make them wider or narrower, which really helps in getting the accuracy that you want. Flower. The outside of the flower petals made the path quite a bit wider. Just easier that way. And for the most part, I was just getting the ends of this in a zigzag sort of pattern. Being careful not to reveal the inside circle too soon. And one final path for that inside circle, and we're done. Again, I use my place and move technique there. Okay, save that, do a quick preview. And recall what I was saying about one of the disadvantages of this method is that the erase function doesn't work right. So we're going to turn that off now. Preview will look a lot better now. Check it out. Okay, now it's time to trace paths on all the colored stuff in the color layer. The color layer also includes the black lines. So basically we can just get nice and wide on our paths here and just cover up the color while not revealing a color that you're not working on too soon and you pretty much ignore the black lines here at this point 
doesn't matter that we're re-revealing those. It's not going to have any effect on the appearance of it when it's running. And because we're using wider paths, this goes fairly quickly. main effect I'm trying to go for here is what if I were coloring this in with a brush and covering over the black lines and I don't have to worry about going outside the lines. That one there is not as too wide to do in one stroke there so I made it a little narrower and covered it up in the back and forth motion there. With the blouse I decided to do a sort of back and forth horizontal motion here. And just sort of asking myself, how would I do this if I were drawing this for real and then coloring it for real? path for the build. And for the pants, and we're fairly wide with the pants here. Just simulating very broad brush, brush strokes with a paintbrush. We don't need to do the feet and the arms. They're already just solid black. So we want the flower. A couple paths for the stem and leaf. And two paths for the flower itself, orange and yellow. And both of these go pretty quickly. Here we go. Yeah, quick preview. Now, probably not strictly necessary. I thought this looked a little better on the blush there if we just did two vertical strokes rather than the kind of slanted scribbles that we've done. Subtle, but I think it makes it a little better. Before they added the grouping feature, there was one major disadvantage with this technique, which is that if you ever wanted to reuse this image in another video, you're going to have to carefully place all of this stuff again. And if you had, want to make any changes to it, keeping everything aligned is a real pain. But now we do have the grouping feature. So all we need to do is group these four images, and then we can modify them together. Let's see how that works. Now we could try clicking on the images themselves, but it's rather difficult to select all four images when they're stacked like that. So what we'll do instead is we we'll go over here in the right panel, click the first one, hold down the control key, and click the second, third, and fourth. Now all four images are in a group, and anything we can do to one, we can do to all four together, such as revert, flip them horizontally, change the size, even rotate the angle. Do a preview here and see how that works. It's a really nifty feature. Okay, but let's put her back the way she was. Control Z a couple times takes care of that.
method two. The second method just uses a single file. So in this one, we won't need a special background. Just go straight over to characters. And we'll import the one and only file we'll need for this part, which is Flower Girl Complete. Copy the title and paste it. And I'm going to greatly speed up the drawing process on this because essentially all we do here is we draw some very particular tight paths on just the black lines, trying desperately to dodge all of the color. And then once all the black lines are selected and paths drawn on them, then we go back and do all the color, very much like the first one, except that in this case, the blush on her cheeks is already there, so we don't add that at the end. And you'll notice I put the points a lot closer together on this one. A lot of fiddling around, trying to get everything to fit in there. It's very time consuming and kind of nerve wracking, really. This is a fairly simple image, but if you have a complex one, this can really be a lot of work. It can take hundreds of paths on a complex image. So it's, it's a lot of extra work to get everything set up. The main advantage of this is once you're all done, you have a nice asset that you can just copy and paste into any project you need it on over and over again. You don't have to line up any uh, multiple images. Once you actually get all the, the work of drawing these paths, it's, you know, really easy to use from that point on, which again is why it's so very good to do your logos in this method. If you do your logos as a single colored file, then yeah, it's a big investment in time up front to get it to look good, but once you do, that logo is available forever. Okay, we'll just watch the paths being drawn here for a while. On the arms here, we can use wider paths because there's nothing to conflict with. Do a nice skinny path on the stem here. Slightly wider one on the leaf. And a really slow, annoying one on the outside of that flower. I noticed that I didn't get around to drawing her feet yet, but uh, I'll take care of that here and get this flower done. Okay. Inside sort of circle on the flower. A few adjustments. I zoomed out and realized I didn't do the feet, so here we go. Okay, and that's all the black lines. Now we started in the color, and again, this looks very much like the other one. When you're doing the color, it doesn't matter if it covers the black lines or not. They already have their paths drawn. They've already been revealed. Notice I forgot her ear on the right there. Here we go. And this took her hair. And I did that same sort of horizontal back and forth on the blouse. Doing a lot of my put the points somewhere else and then move it on this because there's a lot of points to conflict with. Again, the pants use a nice wide path.
stem and leaf. Outside of the flower is a pretty simple path. It's made a nice wide one. And there it is, all done. Bonus! Okay, I lied. There is a third way to do this. This one, we're going to learn how to make an asset like this one. Take something made in Doodly and add just color to it with just one single file. Just trace and pass on the color, not on the lines. Let's go over Doodly and then get started. Okay, so I'm going to go over to characters and we're going to do a search to find the Anne dancing asset. Pull that in. A little small, so I'm going to zoom in. I'm going to be taking a screenshot of this. I need to have some good detail to work with. Okay, I took my screenshot. Now here we are in Photoshop. I also imported the little color swatches from the previous time I did this. Uh, this section of the video is greatly speeded up, as you can probably tell. All I'm doing here is selecting different sections of it. First for the skin, which we're putting in a separate layer. Color that in. Now I'm going to select all the hair, including the eyebrows. And zoom in to get that one eyebrow there. I'm going to color all the hair orange. And this little slice by your ear, so we'll fix that here. Okay, now we select the green for the main part of her dress. Color that in. And I forgot to expand that out, so there we go. Alright, better. Now we're going to get that light green trim on the end of her dress. There we go. And finally, we color the shoes brown. Okay. Each color has its own layer. And there's the lines. Yep. Now I'm selecting just the black lines so that I can know what to remove from the colors. I duplicate all the color layers, combine them into one layer called colors, and subtract the black from it. There we go. Now these are with just the colors. Now I export that as a PNG file, which I will then load into Doodly. And here we are back at Doodly. Back in the normal speed. In characters, I'm going to import that color file we just created. Give it a name. Now, this is the one part that's a little tricky. The color image came in a little bit larger than the original black and white from Dooley. So I have to resize it as well as position it. This will take a few tries, but it's not terribly bad. And using a combination of moving with the mouse and moving with the keys. Resizing, retesting. But still, this is a whole lot faster than exporting lines out of Doodly and tr tracing paths for all of them. By doing it this way, we keep the paths that are traced by Doodly, and all I have to do is trace paths on the color, which is coming up next. And I'm also speeding up the drawing of paths, because you've already seen this stuff before. And we're basically just tracing paths just on a color file. It's fairly easy to do because we have these nice white gaps where the black lines used to be. I 
now you're probably getting pretty familiar with my technique of tracing paths. And again, it's a combination of changing the width of the path we're tracing, doing a lot of what I call place and move. And it goes fairly quickly. And then all of our skin tones first here. Trying to dodge the colors that aren't there yet. Going around the corners is always a little fiddly. Went a little too far on the hair there, back that off. Okay. Notice there's some overlapping when I'm doing the hair onto the stuff that I've already selected. Again, no problem with that. It's not a problem to overlap in stuff you've already selected for tracing. It's only a problem if you're overlapping stuff that you haven't got to yet. Like in this case, the light green hem. Don't want to select that just yet. And finally, the shoes. Okay, and now we go back to the main doodly screen, put it back in normal speed. Do a quick preview with the erase turned off. And here's the result. These are the original black lines done by Dooley, and the color is done by me. Pretty nifty little technique, if I say so. Okay, thanks for watching all this. I hope you learned a few things. Uh, see you next time.